Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number seven of this NHL 22 Newfoundland Growlers Draft Glory franchise mode here on my channel. If you guys have missed episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner. And if you do enjoy this one, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit notifications to never miss when these uploads come out. So today we get into the 2020. 6 27 draft as well as the off season and get into the next season where hopefully we'll see something decent happen but for the draft lottery seattle is going to move up to number one this year minnesota falls to three montreal moves from five to two lots of movement we will be picking at pick number 16 this year though so a little bit of a rough spot to be but that's okay hopefully we'll be able to land some decent prospects here and uh the draft is looking pretty good overall i think we definitely have a chance at landing some good prospects um i'm interested to see how some of these guys turn out because obviously not all the guys we have pinned here are full bar uh potential players but you never know what's going to happen so as we check out the retiring players this year, we'll see Ovechkin retire, still an 84 overall at 41 years old. Insane career, 1,853 points in just 1,684 games. Backstrom also retires in the same year as Ovechkin. Same with Stamkos, uh, Marshawn, Kessel. Wow, lots of players over 1,000 points here. Very impressive careers. We do lose Jonathan Marcheseau to retirement though, and that's okay. Apart from that, for goalies, we see Bobrovsky, Holtby, Elliott, Reimer, Mrazek, all over 200 wins. That's insane. And, you know, pretty decent careers on a lot of these guys here. So, yeah, they were all ready for retirement, though, for sure. So, so Marcheseau would be the only player that we would lose to retirement. Ovechkin would, be, would become a coach. Um, Yanni Heino would retire as a scout, so they'll have to get a new Liga scout there. And by the looks of it... Um, did we lose any coaches or anybody? Doesn't look like it. Okay, that's good to see. All right, so let's get to this draft. Um, we're going to be picking at fifth, or sorry, 16, not 15. Um, we did finish quite high up in the standings, but, you know, we've got a good team on our hands. We just need to see them start to develop a little bit more, and then I think we'll be in a really good spot. Like, I, I mean, I've been saying the same thing for two or three seasons, but really this team isn't all that far away from being really good it's just going to take a little bit longer that's that's all i can really say as an assessment for this team um we might end up signing i follow here um because obviously we can't trade him but he's definitely helping with this team's success right now and i don't know if that's necessarily what we want or if we want to trade him instead or what's going on um but like we've got Vorobiov up to an 86 he's looking like a really solid goalie Peaceman ends up to a 79 to back him up now so we have a lot of homegrown talent we have a lot of good goalies too like we have not missed on too many goalie picks and we are picking out of the lottery which kind of sucks like we're barely in the lottery so we'll see how this draft goes it's going to be interesting not picking in like a top end kind of position this year all right, so let's get to this. I'm not going to hesitate too much on my picks here, but overall this draft is looking like a bit of a weaker one. So when we sim over to pick 16, we're going to see yeah, Boucher was an elite talent. Unfortunately, we didn't finish low enough to pick him. That would have been a real nice pick for the future. Um, and only the top four are really elite players here this year. So that's, that's an unfortunate kind of start to the draft. But with all that in mind... Um, you know, Skyler Henry looks decent, but doesn't really fit our system. Um, Fletcher, I'm not really feeling. Same with Gontrar. So I think we are going to go with Petrov here. Uh, Mikhail Petrov, two-year ETA, looks decent. Um, so let's see how he turns out. And he's a 65-rated low elite, so fortunately he is low elite. He has five X-Factors as well, so that's actually really solid. And hopefully we can see him develop here. Uh, we'll probably end up tossing him in the minors right away. We are going to have to clear out some contracts this year too as we get to that phase. But over to pick 49, and we will see, I believe that one elite goalie is going to get drafted. Enroth was decent. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's Halpern. That's what I was expecting. Hedberg was not bad. Um, 67 rated, but you know, a little bit high rated, but not low elite, which is the kind of difference that I'm playing with here. Um, Victor Street was actually pretty good. Didn't have a great scouting report on him, unfortunately. Um, but you know, decent top six talent throughout here for the most part. A lot of top nines towards the later end, but Dennis Curry is actually pretty decent too. 70 overall, but again, we don't need centers. So now the question boils down to, do we really need another goalie? I mean, Jalen Reese looks absolutely amazing, but 
Bo Gibbons as well could be a decent pickup. Um, honestly, I think we're pretty limited as far as like goalie space on this team. As much as I would like to take Jalen Reese, I don't know if he's necessarily the right move. Same with um, Karel Stastny. You know, we have good goalies already in the system that I have no doubt about. So. I think I'm going to go with Bo Gibbons here instead. We're going to take him. Uh, hopefully, he's low elite because this could be a miss. Okay, and it's not. He is a two-way forward as well, but decent overall, decent all around. Um, again, playing in the U.S. League. Probably could use another year in the U.S. League, but we'll see. Um, for a second rounder, not bad. And I'm sure Stastny and Reese are, yeah, Jalen Reese is just insane. He's 60 overall. Um, and yes, he is a medium elite goalie that looks really good, but... We'll let Tampa Bay have him. Um, hopefully, we won't have to face him too, too much here coming up. How good is this? Okay, Stastny is also 60 rated. Holy goalies. That's three elite goalies by the second round already, and we didn't pick any of them. So, interesting first kind of couple rounds of the draft here. All right, so over to pick number 82 now, and we're going to see not a ton of talent get drafted here by the looks of it, unless the second round was just insane. Um, apart from, I mean, it was looking good. And are there any other really good picks in here? Yeah, another Elite and Chistov. He looks good. Um, apart from that, Pasquale. Oh my goalies. Holy, that's a lot of goalies being picked. So, up next, see, yeah, I want to go with Glass, but I don't know if he's guaranteed. Uh, we have an Elite guarantee here in Ethan Tengrati. Um, Even if he takes five years, if he can make the league by the time he's 23 as an Elite playmaker... I'd absolutely take it. So let's see um, how good he turns out to be. And he's 50 overall. Okay, so nothing crazy, but for the 82nd overall pick, not bad at all. Hopefully we'll see him turn into something. Ooh, Vettero was a low elite goalie. Okay, so interesting uh, fourth round here to start off. Uh, we see Perot. Ooh, Perot was nice too. Okay, where was he playing? Jalen Perot was in the WHL. Okay, so I think Tengrati's actually in a better spot to develop out of all of these guys um Mueller was really good too okay rest of the third round we see MacArthur go another elite goalie oh my goodness so many elite goalies this year there's a 72 rated uh fringe starter here in Moroza but we have a Moroza who hasn't really developed either so I think we'll stay away from him um apart from that who are we taking next could go with uh See, I'm kind of, I, I don't really want to pick goalies or defense because our team has so many goalies and defensemen up to this point. I think I'm going to go with Cedric Bugstad here. Again, another U.S. talent, but we'll take him. He's guaranteed, right? So medium top six sniper. He's tiny, but that's okay. Johnny Goudreau is tiny and has turned into a fantastic player. So heading into the next round here. Um, yep, Cole was an elite goalie as well, so we missed out on that, but... You know, we get a top six talent, hopefully, for the future. And apart from that, any other really good players? Dodge was a decent goalie. Um, oh, yeah, and Healy as well. I almost missed him. So, decent picks throughout here. This has been a really solid draft, especially how many elite goalies do you guys think have been picked here in this draft? I'm not going to take Josephson again. No need for goalies here. We have enough. I'm going to take this Wolski guy because he's... Right now showing an A rating on senses, a four-year ETA at 19. So let's see. And he is a 63 rated low elite. Oh my goodness. What the heck? I was expecting him to be a low sixth in the fifth round because usually the fifth round on kind of sucks. So wow. Okay. That's, that surprised me. I did not think he was going to be that good. And he's a big two-way forward as well for the fifth round. So that's really decent. Okay. Over to pick 181 now, and we're going to see minimal talent taken here. I mean, yeah, Cole was good. Wolski is insane. Um, keep an eye on Wolski. He could be like another uh, Felipe Steves kind of pick that just turns out to be a really good later round pick and develops, right? So, all right, on to, uh, what do we pick, 181 here. Again, I want to stick with guarantees, but we don't have too many. I'm going to take Karanen for sure. Um, probably, yeah, we'll probably go with Stepan for our last pick. But uh, what's his name here? He is off the board, Joachim Karanen. We could probably pick him with our next pick. 
but I'm going to take him. He's a guaranteed low elite to a forward, and he's 49 overall, but again, big body for a late round pick, and hopefully we can develop him heading into the future. So with our last pick of the draft, I'm going to go with that Steppen guy, uh, wherever he is. What's his name? James? Yeah, James Steppen. Um, decent system fit, 19 years old. Again, for seventh round pick, he could turn into something if he's good, and he is. Oh my god, he's 60 rated. What are these picks, man? Like, we have only drafted two players that are under, like, I don't know, I guess we drafted three that are under, like, a 50 overall kind of rating because we drafted Tengrati, Bugstad, and Karanen. But, like, Wolski 63, Steppen 60, Bo Gibbons is 63 rated, and Petrov 65 rated. So, overall for a draft, we bring in some really, really decent wingers here, and I think what's going to actually end up turning into what will eventually be um, the draft that ends up seeing us trade away a lot of, or not trade away, but like offer sheet or have to release kind of uh, a lot of um, centers in the future because we are so heavily loaded at the center position that, yeah, this is this is just insane. We landed every single pick in this draft. Yes, we missed on some elite goalies, but I don't care about the goalies. We have a good enough goalie prospect pool, so... Last bit of the draft didn't look too crazy. Petrov, Gibbons, Wolski, Karen, and Stepin. Five low elites in a draft. That's insane. Then add Tangrati, who's a medium elite, and then Bugstad, who's a medium six. That is all NHL potential level players there. So we'll just give them the time to develop. Petrov and Gibbons should be within two or three years. Same with Wolski, honestly. At 63 overall, we give him another year or two in the whl um he's gonna look really good and overall it just it doesn't get better than that so we have to re-sign some coaches here i'm okay with that um i don't believe tanev is quite the coach that we're looking for i mean i really do like what blake wheeler was able to do first year with this team we did quite well like we just about made the playoffs with wheeler at the coaching helm so Maybe we'll hire a different defensive coach, let Tanev go here probably, and we'll definitely re-sign Barkov because he deserves to be re-signed, I think. Yes, he didn't have a great first season, but the system fits there, which is kind of the big thing that we're working with. So, Deshesny's probably going to want, yeah, okay, associate coach is fine, we'll pay him a lot. He actually had a pretty decent record in the AHL, so we'll hold on to him too. I don't see us re-signing Tanev though, which is okay. And we do have to go out and get a new Liga scout, which currently we don't have, but we will make do and get a new scout here pretty soon. So lots of, wow, lots of amateur scouts expiring here. I mean, we do have 19 of them, um, but yeah, we just kind of get hit with all of those contracts at once. So we will resign everybody pretty much because um, they've been doing their job and we've been landing a lot of steals and good draft picks throughout um the majority of this series so far so let's advance a little bit further here um no scouts but we got edwards Vrobyov, bunch of players that do need contracts and we are starting to finally kind of fill out these contract roles so certain guys probably are making too much money to be honest like yeah we'll probably have to play pay a bunch of these defensemen decently well apart from that um you know, Edwards should get a contract. A lot of these guys probably won't get contracts, but Felipe Steves is going to get a shot now in the AHL. He put up 72 and 91 points in his previous two seasons with, uh, with who is that, Ramuski? Yeah, so he, he looks good. I'm really excited to see him break into the team here. He's already better than Byron Borowski, who was a second rounder in 2024. Steves... The year later, sixth rounder in 2025 is looking way better. So that shows you how far draft steals can go as far as turning average players into really good talents. So I really like where this team is at right now. We've got a huge talent pool to choose from. McClement will probably get a contract too, even though he's a seventh rounder. He again, I, I just I like how our picks are developing. Vorobyov is looking amazing. He's gonna be expensive though. So here we go. Um, time to really get down to business as far as contracts go. I think we offer him just two years for now, leave him as an RFA. I think a $6.1 million contract for Vorobyov as an 86 rated starter who won 33 games in his season day, like his inaugural season. 
I'm really happy with where he's at. So we'll hold on to Vorobiov for sure. Apart from that, um, Mahler's going to be getting a go here. I think we'll go Mahler and Fleischman this year in net. And yes, we'll re-sign Silvergaard. We'll probably release Phoenix Copley because he wasn't all that great. Didn't really do that much for our team um, as the backup, so we'll release him. Peacepinen will be getting the backup role this upcoming year. We'll have Silvergaard as an extra option, but Mahler and Fleischmann will be the guys in net. So I'm happy with where our goaltending's at. Our defense, again, just hasn't developed properly, which is unfortunate because if they have or if they do in the future or if we can land another really good-looking defensive prospect um i think this that's what's going to take this team to the next level and actually make us competitive because you know six seven seasons in here now i am starting to get to the point where it's like okay this team should be doing better than they are and they just haven't made the jump yet so dylan Coglin has been good for us but we're gonna have to convince him to stay with a little bit more money i think a three and a half million dollar deal for the next two years is fitting for him Apart from that, Hudson Jeffrey had a great season last year, so we'll hold on to him, offer him a million-dollar two-way contract. Uh, is this Raphael LeBlanc, I think? Or, sorry, Rene LeBlanc will sign as well. Um, how did Ackerlin do? See, I think Ackerlin could do better playing for our team, so we're going to hold on to him. Um, let's sign him up, get him into the team. And then we're going to release Troy Stetcher. I don't see a need for him anymore. He didn't fit our system all that well. So I think having Stetcher up or Stetcher out will free up a nice, uh, nice space in the roster there for a new player to join in. Um, Kukon was one of our contract fillers, so we'll just wait a second see if we need to do that again. Uh, Frank Vetrano gonna be a nice cheap two-way deal, but we'll offer him as much as we can. And then apart from that, Gibbons, we're gonna let him sit and play. Um, I think I might want to do the same with Connor Tim or Kyler Timmons too. I keep saying Connor Timmons because there is a Connor Timmons in the NHL, but uh, Kyler Timmons will probably let him play one more year just because he looks so freaking good. Um, 80 points in 65 games is amazing. He had great development, and I want him to keep developing. So we'll see if that's actually the case. Uh, our left wing is absolutely loaded. But I do think it is time to kind of start to clean house here with certain players. Like, we do need to clear up some spots for a guy like Grayson Verdino, who looks really good. Um, Brodeen. See, I don't know. Brodeen hasn't really been all that spectacular. 22 points as his best season and his, like, second season in the AHL. For a sixth rounder, I think it is time to release him. So, Matthias Brodeen's gone. I think we're also going to release... Uh, probably Goudreau. I think Kajula is worth hanging on to. He's been a leader in the minors, so we'll hold on to him, but I'm going to release Goudreau. He barely played. Um, Militic, how is he looking? Okay, Militic is worth hanging on to. With 69 points, that's actually a pretty, pretty solid AHL season, so we'll sign him, and we'll sign Rodin, or Rodin, however you say it, and apart from that, Bugstad, Stepan, Grossman, even Petrov. Hmm... I don't know. Petrov could do really good, but at the same time, if he has anything similar to a season that Borowski does, then that's a ruining. Like then we're ruining a first round pick. So, <sighs> what do I want to do? I think we're gonna hold off just for now. If he gets like halfway through the season, has played like twenty games, and doesn't have um, anywhere near the same ice time or points, then we'll sign him, but just hold on to Petrov there as well. We'll we'll see what happens with him. Um, apart from that, Alex Iafalo is probably worth a big contract here. I think we're only going to offer him a two-year deal at like 9.75. He is 33 years old now, so again, isn't really going to get much better than he's at. Uh, but that's okay because he's a really good top six winger and you know maybe we'll end up seeing a guy like neil pionk or somebody on defense actually turn into uh, a good player so or a good free agent that we could sign so deshesny um doesn't want to rejoin our team that's okay now we get all the scouts We do get Drake Kajula, we don't get Vetrano, we don't get Ayafalo, 
We do get Coughlin, Militech, Verdino, LeBlanc, Tersambayev, Silvagard, Rodin, Moroza, Edwards. There was somebody else there I didn't see. Uh, Vorobyov, Ackerland, Mahler. We get pretty much everybody there. So um, The only guy that rejected was Ayafalo, which, I mean, fair enough. Our team really wasn't that good, so we'll offer him 10 mil for the next two years. Um, again, probably worth it. And then we have like $12 million going into free agency that we probably should use. Um, and yeah, with a guy like Kukon, who's just cheap, we'll, we'll sign him up. Vetrano, I don't know if he doesn't want to play for our team anymore. I, that might be the case. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised he's 33 and this team's gone absolutely nowhere in the time he's been with us. Uh, Felipe Steves, I guess I didn't offer a contract to. I probably should have. Um, <laughs> whoops. Apart from that, we'll sign Letary because he's been good. Uh, Winchester. Do we sign Winchester? I mean, he's been all right. He hasn't been great, but yeah, I think we'll probably release Winchester. Again, another seventh rounder. Never really developed quite the way we were expecting or wanting him to. Um, but again, he's a low nine. So we'll release him, clear up another roster spot um, because Petrov might end up in there. Actually, no, McClement will end up in there for sure. And... All right, I think we're good as long as those guys all sign. Um, so we do get I Alex I follow back by the looks of the morale up at the top of the screen. And we get Letary, Kukan. We don't get Vetrano. He wanted to play more, which, again, fair enough. We can release him for that reason. But we get Steves and McClement, and I think this team is ready to go heading into the offseason and free agency. So Vetrano will be gone. We're not going to re-sign him, although, yes, he has been pretty all right for this team and I like where we're sitting at right now with this team so let's see what we can do heading into free agency let's see if there's any big name free agents and uh, I think the growlers can only trend upwards from now on so we need to hire some coaches um, some interesting looking coaches here too for sure but not exactly the scheme fit that we're looking for um, This guy actually looks really good. Um, Pateni? Yeah, Christian Pateni might be the uh, the way to go here. And he's been Vegas's coach mainly. So, you know what? Pateni might actually be a pretty decent uh, coach to pursue. Let's, let's maybe offer him this. I mean, I'm sure he's not exactly looking to coach a bad team like us, but you never know. Um, if we offer him like 2.75 million or 2.9, okay, let's offer him 3 mil for the next five seasons. We'll offer that. That's a big, big contract there over a guy like Wheeler or other guys like that. Um, we need some better like associate coaches and such. So we'll get an AHL associate, preferably a defensive one. Again, he's going to be nice and cheap in comparison and sure that should go all right um okay trade block shouldn't be too big an issue we're gonna pretty much hold on to everybody we got um all right so um, I don't know if we're, we're not going to see the coaches come back right away. We have to just adjust a couple things there. So Wheeler will be moved down to interim head coach for now. Yes, the team did better under him, but we'll see what happens. Um, Vigier, how much is he making? Not really that much, but might be worth firing. We'll see. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's advance forward a little bit more here. Actually, no, sorry. Let's look at free agents. What am I doing? So, big name free agents anywhere? Yep, Neil Pionk. I think we will definitely be pursuing him as an undrafted free agent. Apart from that, I don't think there's too many other guys. Like, yeah, Tachev might be good. or Yeah, Tachev, I think is how you say his name. I might be wrong on that. Um, no real, like, undrafted free agents here um, for the most part. Most of these guys did get drafted. Um, as far as goalies go, Gregoranko is a Florida goalie. He never developed. 
Garand just won um, the Jennings with Lindbaum, who's Lindbaum is insane, but I guess the Rangers couldn't afford him. So, interesting what's going on there. But we will look at all defensemen here. We will attempt to snag Neil Pionk, second highest rated um, defensive prospect or defensive free agent there. And apart from that, you know, Felipe Myers probably would be a pretty decent signing too. We've got a lot of money. We may as well offer it. So let's go five mil for two years for Felipe Myers. Um, he should take that. I don't see why he wouldn't. And then Neil Pionk as well. He wants six million. Again, if we offered five, we still have nine million to play with. I don't think we're going to offer him nine for four years, but we'll probably offer him like eight and a half for two, which I don't see why he wouldn't take that. Um, but adding these extra couple defensemen, I think is going to make a world of difference to the team's success. So let's see, we get Pettinen. That's good. Okay. And we don't get Bentley. Okay. So, or sorry, P Pateni, Pateni or Panetti. I think it's Pateni. Um, so we did get the head coach, which is good. So let's go and, uh, just hire another staff here. I would like an AHL associate or assistant coach. Yeah, associate coach, sorry. And preferably a defensive one. So let's offer Schroeder um, enough money. I don't know why the game puts limits onto the, these kind of things. Like you, when you're not playing uh, owner mode, there shouldn't really be a limit. But we get Neil Pionk and we do get Felipe Myers. So two big name defensive signings there in free agency. And we do get Rainer, Sch or Ra Rainer? Rainer Schroeder as well as an associate coach. So that's good. All right, so we're going to sim to the next season. I like where the team's at. I think we have a really good group of players here um, that can actually be competitive now based on the fact that we actually went and splurged on some defense, which has not been the case in forever. So yeah um i'm excited i think this team can actually put together a winning season this year even though yes technically we did have a winning season last year where we won 42 games versus only lost 40 but we're like just shy of the playoffs so that's the goal with this team this year i think is to just make the playoffs um, we're getting tons of trade offers but who cares um we'll see what happens and you know maybe this team is a disappointment for one more year but if we can, you know, hopefully there's some good defensemen in a draft class, which we haven't really seen over the last little while. Hasn't been any really crazy elite defensemen apart from like, yes, we got Nicholson in our first draft, but he's 24 turning 25 now. So let's see what happens. All right, guys. So this is the lineup we're going to be rolling with for the 2027 slash 28 season. It's actually looking really solid and I'm excited to see what these guys are going to be able to do. We've got Fantilli on the right side there because he's got the best shot on the team. Um, bit of an interesting kind of skew of a lineup here as far as Carpenter, who's a second line type of forward or role, is playing on the third line just to help uh, Edwards develop a bit more. And with Trevor Moore, I think they're going to do fine. Uh, we've got Cahoon, uh, Geeky and Pitkinen. I'm trying to keep Geeky and Pitkinen together because they've been really good all around for the most part. Um, I guess I could swap I follow down there, but I just don't know if that's going to help production or not. I guess I might change that throughout the season. And we're rolling three lines as far as ice time allocation goes, so I'm not really too worried about that bottom line. As far as defense goes, it looks really good. Roll all pairings. Um, I think this top pairing is going to be deadly as far as Pionk and Nicholson goes. I think they could put up a lot of points this year. Uh, rookie Marcel Grandpierre developed fantastically well after last season. So yeah, um, looks really good. Tersumbayev as well is, uh, you know, developed all right. He didn't put up a crazy year last year. 27 points isn't bad, but he has room to improve. And same with Bush uh, and Myers. And then scratched here, we've got Rodriguez, Coughlin, and Moroza. Um, and then look at the goaltending. Like, Yuri Vorobyov is an elite goalie. 88 overall. He looks amazing. Uh, so hopefully he can uh, carry that through the season. Peacemanen is a looking like a really good backup as well 82 rated this is the best goaltending we've ever had in this franchise mode and i think this team could make the playoffs this year all right guys so this is our ahl team for the year uh felipe steves is looking like an amazing amazing steal and hopefully he can carry 
uh, that through into the next season. He's been fantastic in the queue, so maybe there'll be an adjustment period, but I'm hoping he can transition well into the AHL before eventually making the NHL. Um, looking at the defense, it's good. It's really good. Dalman is looking amazing along with Delmore. Those guys should be able to put up a good year. Ackerland getting a start this year, and same with LeBlanc, um, two rookies there. As far as our goaltending goes this year, um, Callie Mahler is already a uh, minor starting goalie at 21 years old. Fleischman at 22 hasn't done quite as well, but that's okay. And we've got a lot of scratch players here too that we might end up injecting throughout the season in the lineup. Um, apart from that, the special teams are meh. They're not great. They're zeros across the board, apart from a minus one there um, on one of the penalty kills, I guess. So yeah, it's not special by any means this team probably is going to miss the playoffs but that's okay because we're really just aiming for regular season development with the ahl halifax huskies so let's get into this season i'm interested to see how the team looks we're going to simulate up to the next round here and we unfortunately do not get tanner Janot, um simply due to full roster and we can't do anything about it so that's what we're looking at uh, for this season coming up here. The team looks solid. 94 offense, 89 defense, and 88 goaltending should be enough to really push us into the playoffs, but we'll see what these guys can do. So guys, this season, the Newfoundland Growlers would finish with a 41-37-4 record. Yet again, just missing out on the playoffs with 86 points. We're within like five points, not even. And you look at the entire league, Yes, New Jersey was the best team, but we finished 17th in the 18th place. St. Louis Blues made the playoffs with 83 points. So it's been one of those years where it's like we're right there on the edge and we just don't get the win. So, or don't make the playoffs, sorry. So looking at our scoring this year, Adam Fantilli would put up 92 points along with 58 goals. That is insane. Yerke Pitkinen would have a great year putting up 80 points as well. Uh, Berkeley Catan would put up 78 points, Connor Geeky with 70, and, you know, Taylor Nicholson up to 52 points on the season. That is easily his best NHL season to date, and uh, it's good to see him up in his production because we need him to kind of hold it de hold down the fort while we try to bring in better defensemen. So, Yuri Vorob Vorobiov, I cannot speak right now, puts up 30 wins, not bad at all. Our best rookie skater is Grand Pierre with just 14 points. And looking at the entirety of the league this year, we would see Matvey Michkov score 104 points. Um, really good season from him, but Adam Pantelli's 58 would be the best in the league, so he will likely win the Rocket. As far as goalies go, um, Mackenzie Blackwood would put up 43 wins for New Jersey, and Aaron Kiviaru for Ottawa. Oh my god, Like we just missed this guy by one pick. We got Berkeley Catan instead, but he's no 94-rated franchise defenseman like Kiviaru is, so... Yeah, we miss out on Kiviaru when that one stings, but what do you do about it, right? As far as your best rookie in the league goes this year, Colin DeMello would put up a fantastic year. Same with Slager, same with Pinelli. Bomeister wasn't really that great for Seattle, but there wasn't really a lot of great rookies in the league this year anyways. So that's the league, that's what we're looking at, and you know, it stings that we didn't do better, but that's just where we're at. And of course, this year we would be looking at a franchise defenseman at the top of the draft too, right? So we're right in that in-between stage where we can't really land a crazy good player, but we also can't really land, you know, a, a playoff spot either, and it sucks. So guys, this year in the playoffs, we would see the Detroit Red Wings get themselves another Stanley Cup. They would beat out Winnipeg in the finals. Um, they would beat New Jersey in the conference finals. They would beat Ottawa in the conference semis and they would beat florida in the first round so really good series or really good playoff from detroit yet again in the ahl i didn't even realize it but the huskies would barely make the playoffs this year they didn't do spectacular but they would get swept by belleville in the first round um, henderson would go on to win though as they would beat ontario san diego texas and eventually wilkesbury scranton to win the calder cup this year so guys, this year for player awards, we would see the Art Roscoe to Michkov, as well as the Hart. Kiviaru would win the Norris, Samoskevich, or Samoskevich, however you say his name, would win the Lady Bing. 
Demello would win the Calder, Lucas Raymond would win the Conn Smythe, Ilya Samsonov would win the Vesna, Gibson and Dostal would win the Jennings, Alex Vlasic would win the Masterton, Ryan Getzlaff, Ryan Getzlaff still winning awards, uh, would win the Jack Adams for St. Louis this year, that's really cool. Braden Yeager would win the Selkie, Michkov would win the Lindsay, and of course, Adam Fantilli would win the Rocket. So anyways, guys, that's where we're going to wrap it up. We'll get to the lottery in the next episode and uh, see how the draft unfolds. But that is it for this one. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit notifications. And if you want to interact with me, make sure to drop comments in the comment box. I'll try to respond to as many of them as I can. And that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Etanio signing out, and until next time.